This is Sebastian Mendel Martinez for MMA Nit. I'm joined here by UFC lightweight Guram Kutateladze, back in your home city of Malmo. Guram, how are you doing? Good, brother. Thank you so much. Nice to see you as always. Always nice to see you, and your beard gets more impressive every time for some reason. I cannot get it out to those links, but i got to work on it. Speaking of stuff we got to work on, uh, fans were looking forward to seeing you return to the cage. Uh, you had a, you know, a great fight against uh, Matthias Gamelot in your UFC debut. Then you were booked against uh, Don Madge. Uh, pretty underrated guy, in my opinion, uh, with an exciting fighting style. You hurt your knee. Uh, I, I know we sort of just talked about it, but for those out there who don't speak Swedish, maybe you could just run through a little bit what happened with the injury and uh, what the rehabilitation time looks like. Yeah, of course. No, no problem. Um, it happened like it was a very silly mistake. It was very silly of me, but things happening for a reason. Uh, and um, it was like this. I was in, a, in my home country in Georgia. And uh, yeah, spending New Year, uh, Christmas, Christmas time together with them, and uh, there was some yeah television, TV, and the interviews and so on. And in one of the interviews, it was uh, very cold in the studio, and uh, we just sat probably for an hour. And I was giving an interview, and they they asked me. They had a bag there, and they asked me like, "Oh, could you like?" kick a little bit and do some stuff you know show some stuff so we can film and do like slow motion videos you know so yeah of course no problem so I warm up maybe like 30 seconds and uh, after that I start like kicking punching doing some uh, crazy stuff you know just for the video you know and um, everything went perfect then I went home uh, and my knee gets swollen and I couldn't bend it, I couldn't stretch it, and it's um, been like that for maybe like three days. Then I went uh, to the doctor, and they did like a laser therapy and stuff like this. So uh, the swollenness went away, but I get like, I get pain, like pointing pain in me at meniscus. And uh, it, my knee was stucking and clicking like different ways, and it was very uncomfortable and some ways even painful, you know. And um, and it's something that I'm not used to, you know. I always thought like, oh, you know, I never had problems with my knees, you know. Like mm -hmm. uh, I can, I, I can no it's problem. Old man problems. Yeah, yeah <laughs> I'm I, I'm getting closer to thirty, you know. So, uh, but that's the on, that's the only number. Uh, so uh, and after I get back to Sweden, I did uh, I X-ray my knee, and uh, doctors said to me we have to operate it. You know it doesn't look good. Okay, I get time pretty pretty soon, like uh, almost in, like in few days. So um, I did surgery, you know, on meniscus, and now now it's recovery time. Now it's rehabilitation, recovery, maybe like strength, not maybe, but strength training. Mm -hmm. But uh, I have to follow the steps, you know, and don't do like uh, crazy stuff too fast, you know, like and uh, act smart just right now. So I should not rush the things, you know. So no Mortal Kombat finishing moves. Unfortunately, not now. <laughs> So uh, now it's just the rehabilitation, probably from six to eight weeks, uh, and strength training to uh, strengthen my knees and legs. Um, and after we're back to martial arts, so I can do MMA again. You know, uh, I don't want to start like too early to make it even worse. I don't want to make a stupid mistake. You know, so uh, hopefully. As I hope and as I plan, as I have it in my head, you know, I am planning to come back maybe in four or five months. Uh, I mean, come back like already have a booked fight and um, have some, have something like to aim. Mm. Well, I know that you said that uh, you liked the Don Madge matchup. Now he's booked against Nazra Takparast. Are there any other fighters out there where you just think like, ah, oh, that would be a great fight for my comeback? Uh, you know, I already had, as you said, booked fight with uh, Don Madge. And uh, I think it's a good matchup, you know, f but in reality for me it doesn't matter. 
uh, whom they gonna put against me so but if they gave him to me already I hope I can fight him uh, if uh, if you know he will do good it doesn't matter if he do good or bad during this fight that he has now upcoming fight with Nasrat Nasrat is one of good my good, good friends of mine mm -hmm. uh, we've been training me Nasrat and his brother they were at All-Stars many years ago uh, so uh, I hope I can get fight again with him so I, th I think it's a good matchup it's gonna be an interesting fight Oh, for sure. I think that I'm not sure. Can't remember which card that's booked on, but that is a sleeper fight for sure that people should tune in for. So uh, again, as we talked about a little bit before, there was a stroke of bad luck uh, at All Stars because you got injured, and then uh, Kamzat, of course, got sick, and he uh, sort of his uh, COVID uh, infection uh, sort of came back. Uh, he started getting better, but uh, yeah, unfortunately, got sick again. Uh, and if you could detail a little bit what happened there, and what was the last thing? When was the last time you spoke with him? Uh, I spoke with him like maybe like yesterday or day before uh, but uh, he's in Vegas now and he's doing his uh, recovery there his treatments they're taking care of him there uh, he's there together with our manager Maizdi um, so uh, yeah it was it was pretty bad you know like uh, he's uh, during COVID period you know when when uh, when he had it, he it was hard, and uh, after it uh, it left some things, you know, some some stuff in his lungs and even heart, you know, and like it it it, it didn't let him go. So uh, and he you now started to train because he thought like he is all right, he is okay. So uh, yeah, and I think that's what uh, what like uh, woke it up again. Uh, but then you know like uh, we're a few guys that are all the time together you know in the gym and uh, like one of the guys probably get sick then another then uh, then in the end like in the end of the week everybody was sick like six or seven person you know and everybody had the fever everybody was coughing you know nobody was training nobody was in the gym but uh, because of covid of hard times with covid hamzat had like really high fever one night he had like 41.5 or something like that so uh we called to ambulance and um, he ended up in the hospital that night uh, but for american news 41 degrees by the way celsius is like 100 degrees fahrenheit or something okay. like that yeah thank you and um yeah and that that was it you know so uh, now now he's quite okay you know he's not 100 percent, but he's quite okay mm -hmm. he's recovering he's on his way so uh, i hope with the god's will and with the god's help it's gonna like it's gonna it's gonna go well for him and gonna go only forward you know what did he uh, what did you guys talk about when you spoke with him yesterday no, we have like a group with all the guys in the gym, you know, and we just uh, talk about the. He seems to be in good spirits, and it's okay. It's okay. Yeah, it's okay. He has. I told him he has a uh, too long hair. He has to like cut it, but he has uh, like some new haircut. So, I don't know. He has to shave it. I think. <laughs> Here, look at you turn going from UFC fighter to fashion critique. <laughs> no, no, bro. Just a uh, friendly advice. <laughs> That's good advice. Believe me, I wish some of my friends from high school would have told me about my hairstyle choices back in the day. They did not. So yeah, yeah. it doesn't look good nowadays, too. So oh damn it! <laughs> <laughs> I got to get your barber. Uh, no problem. It's, it's it's right here, you know. So I, it's easy. I can fix it for you too. All right, cool. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure it'll give me just a good shave, price. Just shave, just shave your head. Yeah. There you go. Just do it. <laughs> All right. So. Let's look back at your division a little bit. Uh, for my money, the, the most exciting division in the UFC, lightweight. Uh, a lot of stuff that's happened there. I remember last time we spoke, uh, you know, you confessed that you cried when Khabib uh, uh, re retired and stuff like that. Or maybe that was me. I don't remember which one of us. Uh, but either way, he now I seems to... Some I had some tears come, coming on, on, on its way, but I tried to like stop. Man it. tears. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, now seems like... Khabib is not coming back. Uh, we saw uh, 
Conor uh, McGregor faced Dustin Poirier a second time, and you know a lot of people were pretty surprised that Poirier pulled off the upset, uh, knocking out McGregor in the second round. What were your thoughts on that fight and the adjustments that happened throughout? Uh, first of all, I think first of all, Dustin did a very very smart fight. He 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 did it very very wise, you know. And of course, he was like well prepared, like physically and mentally, and uh, everything, all this stuff around. But the game plan and fighting IQ, I think that was the that was the main thing during this fight. And uh, and and Connor, you know, I think he was uh, he was uh, he he did too much accent, I think, on his physical strength. He, I think. And I think he had like too much of an ego, you know, from the, okay, I already dominated this guy once. It's not a problem to do it a second time. And he underestimate him probably. And, uh, and, then, and then I think he was too much focused on overpowering uh, Dusty, you know? So he was like, he was a little bit more stiffer, a little bit maybe too like, too stiff as he used to yeah. say you know um, so yeah he wasn't himself I think during that fight and we also saw Michael Chandler have a fantastic debut in the UFC he you know finishes Dan Hooker in a way that a lot of people weren't expecting uh, what were your thoughts on uh, seeing Michael Chandler uh, knock out Dan Hooker yeah it was a good knockout what can I say you know uh, Dan Hooker is is a very tough tough guy, you know. He he went through some wars, you know. But uh, this this was, you know. Chandler did a good debut, I can say, you know. He showed himself pretty well. So and uh, he's a dangerous guy in top three. Uh, top I think top five. I'm not five. sure right now, but yeah. Yeah, in top five, he's one of the dangerous guys. So, but all of them are my opponents in the future. Mm -hmm. I hope, and uh, uh, I hope I can meet them when I get there to top five, to top three. When we get there, I I hope I can, they can meet me there, mm -hmm. and we're gonna through go through them, with a God's will and hard work. Uh, yeah, that's it. And right now, a lot of people are a little bit surprised at the decision-making from the UFC, that they're not being so committal with uh, the UFC lightweight title. Uh, if you were to decide, which two lightweights do you think should fight for the lightweight title right now? Um, it's a very hard question. I, a lot of people feel like Poirier deserves a shot. 100%. Poirier is one of the... One, he's the first guy who deserve the shot but after like Oliveira, he, Chandler. I think it's too early for Chandler mm -hmm. like too early it's not too early he has been in the business for a long long time but he's new in the organization you know yeah. so I think and Oliveira has been there for many many years and he has a good win streak so uh, I think Oliveira deserves a shot uh, but Dustin definitely one of the guy who who uh, who is one of the guys that should be should be on that on that list like number one guy yeah, it's uh, hard not to think so and to kind of root for him a little bit because he's been working so hard to get there right 100% I agree with you uh, have you tried his hot sauce no never <laughs> are you up for it do you like spicy food uh, not too much Okay. No, not not so much. So you maybe wouldn't fare so well doing the hot ones, uh, spicy chili test that he did. No, no, it's too much. Uh, no, <laughs> I, I don't want to do that. <laughs> All right. Well, before I let you go, I got to get your prediction then. I mean, if Dustin Poirier does face Charles Oliveira for the title, who do you think wins it? I think Dustin's going to win it. Yeah. In what way? How did you do it? That's a harder question. Uh, no softballs for me, man. You know that. Yeah, there is no softballs. Uh, 
I think he's gonna fi finish him. Uh, yeah, I, th I think he's gonna finish him. That's my opinion. No, Oliveira, all the respect to him. The guy is. Uh, he has been. He has been a gatekeeper for top 15s for so many years. Yeah. You know, but last years he just did uh, this breakthrough. You know, mm -hmm. and he like rushed in into the top five, and like it's wow. You know, and it's very strange how like how so late in his career he he did he he get his shot. You know, like yeah. uh, he you know like once you sometimes you shoot in your career and like and and, and you get that. So uh, so that's wow. You know, but I think Poirier is more uh, stable. You know, yeah, that's what I think. It's like uh, from seven days, Dustin can have uh, six good days, mm. you know, and uh, and uh, Oliveira can maybe have three good days or four good days, you know. Sometimes he do good fights, sometimes he do bad fight. Of course, he did very good fights, especially the last ones, you know. Mm. But uh, but I have I have. And I think I, I I think Dustin deserves it more than anybody else just right now. I'm kind of inclined to agree, and in, in your assessment there, Bavego, you just confirmed from as the pro that yeah maybe I am onto something with my opinions there as well. All right, well that about wraps it up. The, this was Sebastian Middle Martinez for MMA Knit here with Guram Kuta de uh, We wish you a speedy recovery. Hope to see you back again soon, and always a pleasure to talk to you, buddy. Thank you. Thank you so much, brother. Thank you.